that we break up our fallow ground. He also said to feed the multitude, he broke the bread. The bread had to be broken. And then he blessed it. And it multiplied. My God, you feeling broken? God is about to do something? We don't know when, but if you're being broken, understand that he's about to do something. And start to look at the something. Try to find the gold, hallelujah. When, he, when he's wrote in a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. He's not turning away from you and I. But we turn away from people who have been broken, aren't we? Don't we? But he's not turning away. So whoever wants to reject you, whoever wants to condemn you and whatever that is going on in your life, just know this. He's close to you. God, give him praise. He's close to you. I don't know about you, but I know a few of us are going through some break and you're wondering how, how long. Just say, Lord, I praise you. I am surrendered in this moment. In the moment, take 10 years, just surrender. Just surrender because he's close to you. And then he says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. When I reached the earth, uh, last night I said, whoa, we're going to pause right here. Because meekness, church, is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. It is not being mousy. It's strength under control. It's when you're kind. It's when you're gentle. It's when you're forbearing. It's when you're warm. And it's when you're patient. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But you know what, church? The opposite is someone who is angry all the time. It's someone who is temperamental, who's outbursts of anger at anything when things don't go your way. And so I'm here to say, someone needs to say, Lord, allow me to walk in meekness because that's a part of what Jesus wants us to be. He was described as a meek person. Would you say Jesus was weak? No, he wasn't. So why is it what we, we look down on people when we see them be a certain way? We say, they're weak, man. They should just cuss out somebody. They should just... Yeah? We're ready. And some of us try the people. Cuss them out, man. Don't pay them no mind, man. That's not of God. God is expecting us to be meek and lowly because he, Jesus, was when he walked this earth. I want to be like you, Jesus. Do we really want to be like him? Because he is meek. I'm going to describe, describe again what is meekness. It is not weakness. It's strength under control. It is when you can't be angry but you choose not to be. It's when you can open your mouth and say something when you choose not to do so. Jesus could have called an, an angel, one angel, to rescue him when he was being crucified, beaten. But he opened, that's a word, not me imagining it. He opened not his mouth. Teach us, Lord, to shut up. See, church, God's ways are not ours. Neither are his thoughts. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants brokenness. Say brokenness. brokenness. We look at the life of Job. I'm not studying him today, but we all know the life of Job. And sometimes we just get one little something. I would say, boy, Job, Job life licking me. You would like Job life lick you at all. Boy, look at me in Job place. Waiting for double for my trouble. But let me tell you when Job got double for his trouble. He got double when he repented. No, quickly. Job was God's best man on the earth at that time. So this is what Satan doing. Start to roam. He said, who I can't touch. And then the Lord says, it's time for me to show Job what is in him. I think it's just when Job get trouble that God said, Job had cried. God said, Job, I've cried a long time, but there are other things. Let me tell you something about God. 
There are things he sees, he picks up. Revelation, he's speaking to the churches. He always said, I have this against you right away. He said, I know your works. You do this, you do that. You're doing good, but I have one thing against you. So it is with us. I see you, I see you, I see you. You're doing good wherever you are, not just in the church now, because we have a life. I see you, I see where you're patient, I see. But I have one thing against you, whoever. You're not spending enough time with me. That's God. He will not just come and bam, bam. Condemnation is not of God. He'll convict you, but he doesn't condemn you. If you're feeling condemned about anyone, that's a, that's a part of Satan coming against you. Amen, church? So, so when the things that happen, it's up, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you and all those things. We must know when to rebuke. So Job's life could not be taken, but he was being crushed and broken. And in chapter 29 of Job, we saw Job's true character. What was really inside God's best man. You see, God sees everything, church, everything about us, everything that we hide from each other. You see already, and when it's time, say time. Nobody can't tell God, take away the time, time. In chapter 29, Job under stress exposes what? Pride. Job used the words I, my, and me 39 times in one chapter. God has surely blessed Job, but you know what, church? He got him head. And we're not going to look, you will read Job for yourself. In chapter 39, Job was just boasting. As if he met God, it's not God make him. And so, when things go to our head, it's a problem with God's people. For pride is our greatest enemy. Pride will fool you, church, and tell you, they can't do without me. Whether it's a boss, whether it's your friend, whether it's your pastor, whether it's your, your best friend, whether it's your spouse, can't do without me. If, pride will tell you, if I don't pray, there will be no anointing. Pride will tell you, I can manage on my own. I don't need anybody help. I don't need anyone to know that I'm sick. I just stay here by myself. Pride. Pride will tell you, I know best. No one can tell me what to do. I know it already. Pride will say, it's I who helped. It's my tithes that build this church. It's, that's what pride will do. Pride will say, see, they have to call me because me one can solve the problem. That's pride. And it's all downhill for us as we listen to the voice of pride. There comes a time in church when God will say, enough. He said, that's it, and that's what he said to Job. He said in chapter 38, verse 3 of Job, gird up now thy loins like a man. In today's language, it would be shut up and listen to me. That was my little preamble. Now we're going to get into the meat. Isaiah 6. 1 to 6. New King James Version. Great. Let's read. And we're reading 1 to 6. In the year, can I hear everybody? In the year that the King, year Uzziah, that King died, Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, so high and lifted up, and, and the train up. of his robe filled, filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And then posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with so I said, that's Isaiah, 
Let me hear it. Whoa, it's me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen, my God. Then, number six. Seriously? Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having flew. in his hand what? a live coal, a live which he had coal. taken with the tongues. The seraphim come alive. Here is the reading of God's word. He flew to me, having in his hand a, a live coal, church, which he had, God had more taken. He didn't turn prophet Isaiah in chapter 6. He was prophet Isaiah from chapter 1 or whenever, whenever that book was written. He was a prophet. But God was about to turn him up a little notch or more. Say next dimension. Next dimension. What was that next dimension for Isaiah? Why his lips had dimension. to be cleansed? Because he was about to be, to be the one that would prophesy the Lord Jesus' birth death and resurrection for broken and that brokenness comes when we are repentant so we saw where Job was repentant now we see Isaiah Isaiah's repentant was woe is me and see himself because no man the word of God says can see God and live so that word I had I mean many years ago then word said you see God but there's another word, but the word don't contradict when we're reading the English, but we understand that the word ra is to see, but it's really not to see God. It is to see what God sees in us. So that was the encounter Isaiah had. He couldn't see himself. He was just the prophet Isaiah mixing up and mingling with the people that he's prophesying to. And you know, we gather, we can say, boy, here's a sister Jane and Mary, Martin, who she, and Isaiah said, what do you say? A truth? Oh my God. I need to go pray. God, we don't know. But the word of God says, I dwell in the midst of a set of people. And he know what he was doing. And he said, whoa, whoa. it's me. Whoa. The minute we repent, church, is the minute God come. And don't wait and cock it foot and stuff. Because if she going to stay that long in the repentant mode. The minute we repent, the minute we ask for forgiveness, he comes and forgives. He comes and when we truly repent, throw that thing into the sea called forgiveness. We need to stop bringing it up before him and we need to stop reminding people what they do. Amen. Here, look up the baby saying, Amen. Can I hear an Amen? Amen. We will never see Jesus until we are broken. Some of us are self. So the battle is there. Self against the Holy Spirit. Where is, well, where's Vinny? I need three men, three people. Don't have to be men only. Three people who will demonstrate this. The Lord speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Three people. What, we're afraid of the platform this morning? We need three people. Holy Spirit is one. One is a human being and one is going to be self. Three people. We have two here, one more coming. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so the one female will be the human being. All right, now stand there. One is self and one is the Holy Spirit. Who wants to be the Holy Spirit? Brother, Minister Keith is the Holy Spirit. So Minister Michelle, who is this, like us, come close, come close. All right, self, Holy Spirit, Minister. So the Lord is speaking. Michelle, my daughter, I really want you to
to lay aside the entire week to come before me. And the Holy Spirit is whispering me. Something. And self is pulling her away. And the Holy Spirit, see what the Holy Spirit is? He whispers, but he now went bold. He's going to have to take Michelle to tell self to die. I must obey the Lord's call on my life. So she now decides and she's going to spend time with the Lord. So self has to take a back seat. It, it don't really depart, you know. Come back. It don't really depart. But it, if you want to hold on your head in shame, shame. Self don't really shame in the cross. Self is going to war. Amen? But it, you get the picture. There is a battle all the time. And it is for us to crucify the flesh and say, die. I have to obey the Holy Spirit. All right. Thank you. Minister Keita, Michelle, come, stay, stay, stay back, Kishana needs one strong man now, we're good job. Stay near back. One. No, it's a, uh, oh, well, oh Lord, worse. <laughs> it's a muscle. Hallelujah, so we have two, two men. There's going to be a wrestling match here, so think of how you went to wrestle. Hallelujah. Not behind the table so that the camera can see you. Go over there. Go over there, gentlemen. All right. So putting self to death is what the Lord wants. Because he speaks through the Holy Spirit. And you just saw the demonstration of the Holy Spirit giving Michelle direction. But the self is pulling her away to do whatever. Because she's busy. She, she has things to do. She doesn't have enough time for this. Next week, Lord, when I get my, my, my life together, then I can spend time with you. Anybody identify with that? You put him somewhere because you have yourself and your things. You have to study. You have to um, my master's to go to become want a better promotion and talk of things faster. The sad thing, church, is that we're lovers of ourselves more than lovers of God. This is the word of God, not me say so. Centered on our desires, our plans, our happiness. As I said earlier, when we're so centered, it becomes mission impossible for self to be crucified. Self is not to be played with. Church is not a plaything. Self will come and take over. In Nehemiah, read how Ezra, where they made a little room in the temple for some balance. And some balance represented self. And when Nehemiah or Ezra came back into the temple, self took up the whole temple. You give him a little room and you have to go away. Don't pay no mind and it will take over the whole place. Take over this temple. So self is not to be played with. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Turn to 2 Corinthians 10. Um, upstairs can we find it? 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. And then the next one will be Ephesians 6, 12. I'm going to tell you that this, the Lord knew that we would be wrestling with flesh, self. And he gave us a way out. Are we there? Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. So Second Corinthians says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds. Five. Casting down, say casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's what we're to be doing daily. Because daily we have thoughts. Daily it is not of God. Daily flesh rises up and daily we need to crucify. It's a daily thing. But repentance is a daily thing. That's crucifying, repentance. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So we have this arrested match. The flesh, self, against the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen? So we're going to wrestle. We should decide who is the Holy Spirit and which is... <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're going to rest now. So Holy Spirit, you have to wait in now. Oh, hallelujah. We want to see the Holy Spirit wait. It's a wrestling match. Well, literally, yeah, and um, Kishan representing the human being so with the Holy Spirit living inside. So it's a representation, right, of a human being with the Spirit of God and the flesh rising up. So we're going to rest and see who's going to win. <laughs> that was quick. Praise the Lord. That was quick. Oh, God, help us to be that quick in the spirit. My God, do it again. <laughs> Somebody miss it. Rest and remember now, Holy Spirit, have to win. Conquer it. Put Today, hallelujah. Give, give, give them both a good Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Do you get the drift, no church? You get it, you understand. It's a daily thing. We can't just sit back and relax because you know what? Seth will conquer. Seth will. One of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. I will pause and say, Thank you, Lord. The moment I ask, the moment there is true repentance, say true repentance. Because church, there's false repentance. I'm not going down that path, but there is false and there is true. The minute you recognize and you say, Lord, forgive me. So we don't need church for that. We don't need church, Apostle. Come we're in the church. Right away when we recognize something, just talk to the Lord. Whether in the bathroom, in the car, even if you're in, a, in the midst of an argument, you recognize. Mm, not of you, Lord. You can turn one side and say, God. And deal with the matter. And then at a later moment, you can deal with it. Listen, God is everywhere. If not, we do not need to come to church. We need to live a life like this. That when we come to church, we are so excited and bubbling that we don't need to come to Hallelujah! And everybody, whoo, we bring our own hallelujahs. The angel did not place a coal on his head to have the mind of to speak the truth. The angel did not lay it on his feet to give as a directions from God. He laid it upon his lips, church. The lips would be purged because he had to speak about Jesus. So purged from the negative confession and the critical words that we, not just as are, are very guilty of. He said, I'm a man with unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. I put it this way, could it be that Isaiah not only spoke negative words, but he listened to a bunch of people who spoke negative words? Is it okay, church, with us listening to the negative talk, even though we don't speak of ourselves? Is it okay? Or do we feel something like, ugh? I know that's me. I can get caught. So I've trained myself not to get into the midst of certain things and sometimes you get caught. You have family members and people and you have to know when to make an escape. The Lord gives us a way of escape. If you know that this is not of God, you just say, excuse me, I need to go now. No argument of that's their today. It's not yours. It is time for us to mature in the Lord and know we don't need an as I am moment, woe is me, because there are other things that there is, woe is me. Can't stand you, but find you. Because they can get some juice, or they can tear, tear down somebody. God is not 
in that. When those things are happening, I'm here to tell you, the Holy Spirit does not leave, but he withdraws. He withdraws. As long as you keep that up, he withdraws. So ISI was about to, it was time for him to talk about Jesus. And, and the Lord says, no, you have to have the woe is me. So don't despise the breaking because look for the Lord's signature in this and say, Lord, I repent. I repent of this. I repent that I feel like you shouldn't do this to me. I shouldn't allow this to me. Have to me. Why am I sick? Why am I marriage in problems? Why am I never have a picnic? Whatever it is, time for us to say, God, I surrender. Show me what you're seeing in me. God wanted Isaiah to carry the message of the coming of his son. But he had to reveal to Isaiah his real self first to bring him into true ministry. We must be broken. And this brokenness is a forgotten factor in Christendom. Christians just seem to have a little pride about them. Suddenly we just proud. I don't get it, but God is breaking his people because you never got saved to just sit in church and come every Sunday. There's more for us. Whatever way Isaiah saw the Lord Church changed the course of his life. Woe is me. I had my first, let me hear, I had my first woe is me experience 38 years ago, June the 2nd, 1985, down in Nazareth. And that woe is me didn't come right away. I sat in that church and I was like, I am leaving this church. He can't stay at the altar with him hand high up. I gone. And I was ready to leave. The woe is me never come yet. Somebody had to be interceding beside me and I was like wanting to say, woman, get off me. Self can be very powerful. And self was ruling me that moment. But the, the woman kept interceding. And interceding. And I was getting angry. And I was getting alone. And then it broke. And when I said yes, say yes, church. Yes. When the Holy Spirit is trying to get through to us by brokenness, just say yes. I said yes and I walked to that altar and I faced and I saw Jesus hanging on the cross. I was carrying. That was my woe experience. But I'm here to say that was not the end of my woe experience because I continued to live. And things continue to happen in my life that I don't like. Are there things that happen in your life that you like all the time, church? And as I continue to walk out my walk with the Lord, I started to do my woe is me. And woe is me happens sometimes twice for the day. Because if it's not a person that annoy me, is something prick me, woe is me. I have to, I don't need no more long term breaking. Keep short accounts. I've had enough of the long term. You know what church, I can laugh. I know what I'm talking about. 12 years. And then I'm like, that's it. But God said, no, I have a work for you. Then I had my own is me experience. Then I'm coming to a church, and then you have leadership role. Woe is me. Because not everything you do 
people like. And then you hear how them have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Whoa, it's me. <laughs> it's no longer, hear them a chat about me? No, they can chat on them one. God heard it. That's where I'm at. I don't care anymore. Woe is me. I'm at a place where, Lord, you won't use me, use me. Even right now, I can tell you this. The devil never want me to come up here and preach this morning. But I said, Lord, if I have to do this, you fix what's going on that's not of you. And here I am this morning. I don't have one twinge of whatever experience I was experiencing earlier. Glory to God. The process had been gone for Isaiah. First he saw the Lord, and that's what we need to do. We need to see the Lord. As I said, the word of God says, no man sees the Lord and lives. So that word Ra means you see what God sees inside of you. Whether God sees that you're full of rubbish, whatever that rubbish is, you're full of anger, you're full of lust, you're full of malice, whatever it is, you're too mean, you're selfish, or you chat too much, whatever it is, you need to start to recognize that this is not of God. And the only way we can recognize that something is not of God is to be reading His Word. This is how we see God. Do you get me? So when we're reading this, we are seeing God and seeing what he represents. And if it don't line up with you, then it's your problem and God's problem. And God wants us to have that woe is me experience. And then in that woe experience, it's a cry of agony. Oh God, is this how I am? Oh God, when last we do that, oh God, this anger won't leave me. Oh God, you see I'm lost in an to lost. Oh God, help me. Oh God, you see me sleep with a woman and I shouldn't have. Oh God, help me. Isaiah came face to face with God. And the encounter had one purpose, to burn out and destroy everything that's negative. We need that church. We need that moment when God is the consuming fire, destroying everything that is not of him, not resisting it. And whatever fire was put on his tongue, it sealed Isaiah for a lifetime of service as God's mouthpiece. Some of us are so gifted, but we are stagnant. Do you wonder why? Let the Lord continue to talk. And God cried out, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And as I responded, here am I, send me. When God sees us purged of stuff, he's not going to ask that question again, who shall I send? Why? Because in the New Testament, he says, go ye. He's not asking who shall. He said, go ye to all the world. Yes, say, right away, go ye to all the world. Which world? See, evangelist of our here, she pick up ourselves many, many years ago, she hear God said, go here, go there. And that's, she's not the only one that has to go to Africa. That's not where God or Singapore and okay, South Africa, where is evangelist? Brazil all over the world and we said oh the going to the world is left for evangelist the poor and the evangelist like that no god is said that was her that's her call but god is saying to us his people get saved go into all the world the job on the bus on campus in your family, go ye into all the world, wherever you go daily, into the supermarket, at the cashier, the sin of woman look away, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be leading you. My darling, are you okay? Can I pray for you? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We don't need the platform and a mic to be preaching the gospel. Our very heart condition will preach the gospel. When we show love, it will preach the gospel. Who shall God send in this day and age? Who? 
all of us, say all of us. All of us. Ma Jesus said it in Mark 16, verse 15. Go ye into all the world. Thank God. That's heaven's language. It's okay. Well, not really. Hallelujah. You know what I can say? It's not the tongues too. Because they have to have tongues too. And some of us, I have bumped upon somebody in my in RTF ministry. I don't know anything terrible was wrong, but I just needed some healing. But when the tongue started to burst, I stepped back and said, mm, this is not of God. African tongue, I mean like real language. And the Lord, I was in an amazement. I said, oh yes, okay. This is not, it was at the deliverance time too. So you have to, it's not tongues. God showed me many other reasons why I can say it's not tongues. It's the heavenly language. It's a word of God. Satan, don't afraid of tongues. This is what he's afraid of. He and his host of people speak the word and they back up. We need to know the word of God and to be able to use it back, which is what we're going to do shortly. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan, not just fear, he hates the word of God. And Jesus set the example for us of why don't we follow? We want to be more like you, Jesus. Well, when he was coming out of the wilderness, 40 days, Satan come, and what he said, it is written. Jesus, never box him down, he just said, it is written. And three times, is Satan food food? Three times Satan cried. And he just kept saying, it is written. It's time for us to know the word of God and say, it is written. God Almighty is maturing this church to be able to say, it is written. It is written, church, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It is written that he has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. It is written that he sent his word to heal you of every disease and by his stripes. We are healed. It is written, death and life is in the power of the tongue, which is coming out of our mouth. It is written, church, call those things though they are not as though they are. It is written, we're sick call for the elders. It is written, when sick, call for the elders. My God, my God. It is not written when dying, call for the elders. It is written when sick. You come from the doctor's office and he tell you something that is not of God. That you have this and you have that and you have X amount of time to live. It is written, call for the elders. You don't stay in one corner and boy is sick and boy this and the doctor said this. Thank you, doctor. You go back in your car or wherever and you say, it is written. Then by his stripes I'm healed. And then you know that in James chapter 5, call for the elders and the prayer of faith. God's word cannot come on the court of victory. God's word cannot return to him void. I, I mean, while, while earlier as my, my heart pain, like the Holy Spirit was in pain. We overlook this. Some people die because of overlooking this. Can we read it together, loud and clear? Is it? Next verse. And the prayer of faith will save us. And, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Hallelujah. James 5.15. Hallelujah. Notice. It don't say, I'm glad I prayed. Apostle, you know, it's seen here. And it's seen there. The Holy Spirit already know what's going on. And if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Meaning, because you obey the word and come into his presence before elders, and we anoint you with oil and pray, this scripture will come to pass. Because the prayer of faith, the faith to believe that God is in the man or the woman of God, that's anointing you because of the word. And if I have sinned, I don't have to, it is forgiven. You don't have to confess it. It's not a Catholic church. 
the Lord will just come and anoint you and forgive your sin because you obey. James chapter 5, 14 and 15. Say glory to God. Glory to God.